morning and welcome to another marriage edition of Living in the Word. How is everybody doing today? Oh, we're yeah. blessed. All right, yes. all are in the yes. house and we are feeling wonderful this morning. And we're so happy that you joined us today. I want to remind you that if you are a uh, first time uh, coming to our channel, or if you've been here for a while, go ahead and hit that button and like and subscribe to this channel. So that'll help you and that'll help us. As I know, it'll let you know when we're on, but it's gonna help us uh, push our way through it and have more people come and visit our channel. So go ahead and hit that, that like button and subscribe to the channel if you will. And before we get started with this wonderful marriage edition, I wanna remind you about Word Wednesdays. At, at 5.30, we know we have that prayer line. So go ahead and give us a call on the prayer line. That number is 351-999-3535. And when you call into that line, Pastor Will and Sister Gwen are gonna pray for you and your situation. And how many people know we need prayer in today more than we, than we ever have? Amen. Amen. After Amen. that 5.30 prayer line call, Go ahead and join us in the sanctuary. If, you, if you're out and about, come on by the church. If not, go ahead and tune into this channel right here. And we're going to have Sister H Hogan, and she's been doing a, 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 a long series, or night series, on spiritual maturity. You know what? I want to be spiritual, I want to be right, and I want to grow in the Lord. And she's helping us do that and recognize how we do that. So go ahead and come on down at 6 o'clock for her. But right after that, Minister Cole has been tiptoeing through the scriptures, as he likes to call it. And he's going line by line, verse by verse in the scriptures. We've been in Exodus. We've been in Revelations. We've been, I believe, in Genesis. So please go ahead and come on down and join us here in the church. But that's Word Wednesdays, and we're talking about this morning, and this is Sunday, Living in the Word. Now again, this is a special edition. This is our marriage series, and we're going to go ahead and kick it off to Pastor Will. Uh, thank you, Sister Vanessa, and first of all, good morning to everyone. I'm joined again today by three lovely couples, uh, Deacon Johnny Mason and Minister T.M. Mason, uh, Minister Jamar Green and his lovely wife, Sister Notoria Green, Deacon Brian Jones, and of course, our very own Sister Vanessa Jones, and the First Lady of the Nineveh Missionary Baptist Church, <laughs> Lady Gwen. Uh, we've been exploring the Institute of Marriage, the blessings and benefits of marriage, and I had a little fun this week, Deacon Brian. I looked at some of the marriage customs of different cultures, I'm going to share a couple of with you. Did you know that in India, 90% of marriages are prearranged? Wow, that's, that's a lot. That's, that's a lot. So, Minister TN, that, that means you wouldn't get the opportunity to look Google-eyed at Deacon Mason and say, that's who I want. <laughs> How about this one? In Morocco, the bride wears a black dress. It's a Catholic tradition, and what it represents is that she's in this commitment until death does part, wow. she and her husband. In Romania, the bride is kidnapped just before the wedding, okay. and the husband has to pay a ransom to get her back. Wow. Yeah, and I'm sure the, the father is sitting there going, no, two million pesos, <laughs> two million, <laughs> two million. <laughs> And of course, this is really, really hilarious. In South Korea, um, after the wedding, the groom's feet are beat with dried fish. What? Yeah, yeah. So they whip his feet. Who known? Who known? You the man? Who known? You the man? Who known? <laughs> so <laughs> I just thought I would have a little fun, guys. <laughs> uh, but but anyway. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And of course, what we've been concerned about is the devaluing and the decline that we see in marriage, in our culture. And so that's what we've been talking about. And today, we wanted to start talking about something that's very important to marriage, and that is covenant. Marriage is a covenant relationship. A covenant is different than a contract. It's much more solemn. It's a much deeper commitment. So we're going to just talk, start talking about covenant. Does anyone have a definition or what you believe a covenant to be? 
I, I would say it's a spiritual agreement because um, it's going into the will. So a spiritual agreement, especially if God is in the midst of it. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? I would say um, just like um, Minister Jamar. I almost called you Deacon Jamar. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Minister Jamar um, just said it's ordained by God. It's something um, that God put in place, and then we enter into it with God and someone else. So it's something that's ordained by God. Okay. Uh, what about covenant versus contract? I know you talked a little bit about that earlier, Sister Vanessa. Uh, I did, I did. Uh, when I think of the term contract, I think legalistic. Mm -hmm. You know, if you do this, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. If you don't do this, I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. But a covenant is more so you do this, I do that, and if you don't do your part, I still must uphold my part because mm -hmm. we're in a covenant together. Okay. And it's not based upon your actions, but it's truly about what we've agreed to do. Okay. And that third party is God. Okay. And um, so as long as you remain up under the covenant, he covers you. Mm -hmm. And so, and I, I think that's really important with covenant. It's, it's not just me and her, but we, as long as I maintain my, the covenant, God covers me. Mm -hmm. so. So, so, so covenant is a, a binding agreement. You know, it, it's a solemn agreement. And when we look at the scripture, whenever God begins to deal with man, in an official capacity. He always dealt with man through covenant. You know, we look at the Noahic covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, the Mosaic covenant, the Davidic covenant, the Palestinian covenant, and the new covenant. God always set up terms, but a covenant was never something that you could enter into lightly, nor could you get out of it lightly. As a matter of fact, covenants were sealed with blood. Amen? So, so when you stood there, Minister TN, and you, you said, uh, what, till death do us, us part. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Did you know what you were getting yourself into? I did, yes. Um, okay. I did in portions. Um, <laughs> Because we're, we're ever learning, mm -hmm. uh, we're evolving. Mm -hmm. So my understanding, according to scriptures I have read and things I have been learning spiritually, I like to say, I did understand to a certain degree. But mm -hmm. once I made the covenant, I learned on a, on a deeper level of mm -hmm. understanding yes. what that agreement really is. Yes. And for me, covenant also... Um, a uh, um, synonym also is promise. Mm -hmm. And another word for covenant is promise. And when you make a promise, it's still yet different from just an agreement. Mm -hmm. And I think it involves the heart. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, um, the promise you make, it involves the heart where uh, a contract is actually obtained legally uh, through laws, but a covenant is promising uh, from the heart. Mm -hmm. It's a heartfelt. So no matter how you feel and your how your feelings are, or you know your, your emotions, when you make a covenant between God, that's a, a promise that's unbreakable. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about that covenant, First Lady and? when you come to those seasons when the relationship doesn't appear to be working out? I think that when you come to your winter seasons and you will have a winter season, <laughs> that you have to stay committed and know that you know God joined you two together and whatever you, whenever you come out on the other end of the struggle, you'll come out stronger, wiser, loving one another more because you've learned some things about one another. Okay, okay. You, you were gonna make a comment, Deacon Burr? 
Well, I was just going to pick up on, on, we kind of mentioned this earlier, and I hadn't found um, anywhere in the Bible where the Bible told the woman that she had to love the man. Mm -hmm. And, um, but the Bible does, it says, tells the woman to respect her husband, but the Bible tells the man to love his wife. Mm -hmm. And so I was just kind of meditating on it this morning. I said, you know, really, I believe what we should do as a man, we should love to take care of and respect our wife. Mm -hmm. Okay. But for our wife, I think that she should respect, take care of, and love their husband. Okay. You know, in, in, in that order. And, you know, I, and I believe that if we'll do that, that, that marriages will be better. Because I know that men really want respect. Yes. And women really want love. Yes. And so if we could share that and give that, that we could have some satisfied and happy people. Yes, yes. And, and some studies have shown that a woman's greatest need is affection. She needs to feel loved, but a male's greatest need is to be honored or respected. And so, but I, uh, you were going <laughs> to come in. <laughs> what did you say? Uh, I just said I just sometimes thought that it was different for a man, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Respect wasn't their top priority. <laughs> it is, it is. Uh, but I, I understand, based on what the Bible says, that if we would respect our husbands, and it is, it's sometimes easy to lose that respect because they don't, you guys don't always do things the way we feel like it should be done. And once the crack or the door is open for me to disrespect you, and I get in my feelings and it keeps going and going and building and building, it's hard to kind of come back and respect you because you really got on my last nerve from the beginning, I guess, to put it nicely. Thank you, sweetie. That was put very nicely. <laughs> very nicely. <laughs> but you think about this right here, okay? What, what about the love thing? You know, the love is, they have to say love is what love does, right? Mm -hmm. And what if you don't feel respected, then it makes it harder for a man to love. Mm -hmm. It really does, even yeah. though, not, you know, you, I might love you in my heart, but I'm kind of mad at you right now. So mm -hmm. it's hard for me to show you love. Mm -hmm. And so, so it, it's a twofold thing. I call it one of them crazy cycles. Yeah. You know, and you yeah. have to be careful when you start a crazy cycle because before mm -hmm. you know it, you're cycling out of control. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, but you, if you, but if you keep that at at the top of your mind, I got to love this woman. Mm -hmm. I got to um, to nurture her and mm -hmm. everything else. So, yeah. And I, I, and I think. Go ahead, Deacon Mason. I think when they tell the man that. It's because that's not something that's natural for him. Mm. Mm. It's more natural for the woman, so you don't have to tell her to love. That's, that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm. So, but the man, you're gonna have to remind him that you know this is not your slave. Mm -hmm. You know this is your partner, and and it comes right before, before that. It tells you you're subject one to another, mm -hmm. so you're not subject to your slave. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that's very good, Deacon Mason. Because one of the things that I've learned is most uh, cultures are male dominated, so there's a lot of male chauvinism. And so, you know, we have to deal with that. But one of the things that helps me is when you begin to look at marriage uh, in the context of many of the covenantal scriptures. Mm -hmm. For example, Paul, when he was talking about the mystical union between mm -hmm. Christ and his church. Mm -hmm. Our marriages are models of that, mm -hmm. you know, the way that Christ loves his church and the way that the church is supposed to be submitted to Christ's lordship. So, so we are a model, and I think that when we get it the way God designed it to be, I think it becomes a reflection of him. The same with the Trinity. You know, we are a reflection of the Trinity husband, wife, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So um, just wanted to throw that out there. 
Any minutes tomorrow? Any, any comments? Um, we hit on some good stuff. And so I, I know you said um, the man wants to be respected and, and uh, the woman love, but Aretha Franklin said R E S P E C T. Find out what it means. So, so the, the woman also wants their respect. I hear it a lot. But yes. then we got Miss Tina Turner who said, "What love got to do, do with it?" it. Yeah. <laughs> now yeah. she was just saying <laughs> her context was the issue she was dealing with and yes. uh, what we saw, and that's what you know. We we want the, the, the people coming up behind us, the older ones, even who are new to marriage, no matter what the age, is to understand the respect and the love that she give to the spouse. In this, this world now we see sometimes um, a person think love is being hit by their spouse. Mm. Uh, that's not love. That's not respect. Mm. Um, so, some think being talked down to by their spouse mm -hmm. is love because that's what they've been taught and see. But mm -hmm. we want them to see it this way, in the way that God shows his love to you, the way that God shows respect to you, the way that Jesus loved for us. Is, that's what we had to do in this marriage thing called marriage and not the way the world sees it. Yes. And that's what I love. Yes. Yeah. 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 Let me, let me read another one of those uh, covenantal scriptures, and let's take a little dive into this. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 2, it says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave, that word cleave means to be glued together, he, and shall cleave to his wife, and they too shall become one flesh. So that's one of those covenantal scriptures and this is something that mis happens mystically when a man and a woman are joined together in marriage, the Holy Spirit, by some supernatural transaction, makes them one. Because God says they are no longer twain, right. but now they are what? Yeah. They are one. Mm -hmm. So your, your spouse becomes a part of you, and you become a part of your spouse and so if that relationship is ever severed you ever glue two pieces of paper or or some product together and then you try to sever it there's there's a lot of damage done mm -hmm. there's a lot of damage and I think that's one of the reasons that when people walk into a marriage and for some reason Satan destroys that marriage and breaks it up, there's a lot of carnage. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pain and a lot of wounding. I was thinking about that one thing mm -hmm. because that one thing I don't believe means that we're the same. Mm, that's good. I, I, I don't believe that we're the same. I believe that we are still two different people. Mm -hmm. But now we're one in mission. Mm. We're one in goals. We're one in everything else that we do. And so that's I, because Vanessa and I are different. Mm -hmm. But but one of the things that I know that that I am incomplete without her. Yes. And so with her, I'm complete. I'm I'm whole again. Mm -hmm. And I I. I, I I think that one, that's what that one means is whole, mm -hmm. singular. And, um, you know, like I said, and I, I, I keep um, talking about couples ministry, but in couples ministry, our theme for the year is how can two walk together unless they be agreed? Yes. And so if, if we don't agree on things, not, not that we're going to agree on everything, but we, we come together. Mm -hmm. and become one, and then we walk, um, that makes our marriage better. Mm, that's good. Mm -hmm. Good. A anybody see the differences between you and your mate? Mm -hmm. yes. what, what? <laughs> can, we, can we talk about some of those contrasts? <laughs> uh, I think I'll speak on that. Uh, <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Let me get the band-aids out. Honestly, I can't really say it's a bad thing for my husband and I, but um, meeting him and getting to know him, mm -hmm. dating, it was kind of like, okay, 
he seems a little rough on the edges. You know? <laughs> and I'm more of a quiet, go to bed mm -hmm. early, at 10 yeah. o'clock type of person, and he likes to stay up. Brush your teeth for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when we were married and coming to get, excuse me, coming together, it's, it was more of, okay, we're gonna have to compromise on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, I know you see things different, I see things different, but mm -hmm. if we can come to that middle ground and to agree or disagree mm -hmm. on things, then it, it's gonna work. Yes. You know, and that's like, as his wife, you know, we've been together almost 14 years, married almost 14 years now, and I look at him as, well, you should know me. Mm -hmm. You should have, you know the things okay. I like, I don't like, and I should know the thing, which for the most part I do um, know a lot of things that he don't like and like. And so even though we're different, I feel like as a married couple, especially for the, the veteran couples, mm -hmm. even though you're different, you should come together of actually knowing that partner. And it's not so much of, okay, we're different, mm -hmm. but we are not at that middle ground where we're not so different. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Yes. If that yes. makes sense. Yes. So. And with it, it takes time. That's, that's gonna be a big thing. Amen. It takes time. Coming into um, her family, I, I call them the, the Williams clan, coming into that family, they're very different from, from the Green family. <laughs> we were solo people. We didn't go out, we didn't hang with our family, we didn't do any of that. That mm -hmm. family, they love to talk. They love to be together. They like to travel. I don't like to do any of that. But it's a compromise. And as we can learn, it takes time to learn yes. these things. And and um, so that's the biggest thing. Take the time to learn your spouse. Take the time to even learn the family because you got to be with them all mm -hmm. your life. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And and I think when you see those contrasts, sometimes you see their strengths and weaknesses. So where Gwen has strengths, I may be weak. And where I have strengths, mm -hmm. uh, Gwen may be weak. Do you mm -hmm. have any comments, uh, sweetie, on that? Um, no, I don't think so. What's the tea? I think so too, but I can see a lot of differences uh, with Johnny and myself. Uh, but what I appreciate is when we spend the time learning the differences. Mm -hmm. And what I've come to understand, it's like with him, I like to get to know him like as the person God has made him, mm -hmm. you know, his makeup, uh, him as a man. But we had to like shed some of the, the ashes. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's like things, some things have been instilled in us and a paradigm has been formed that was not necessarily ourselves mm -hmm. or not necessarily from God. Yes. So we have to learn how to reset paradigms take some things off and earnestly get to know us as individuals that god made and created mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying on some yes. things we have to to learn how just within ourselves uh that are different because some things are different because that's the way god created some things are different just because of experiences yes you know yes. and yeah. so we all have to grow and shed some things and adjust some paradigms to really get to know each other, to mm -hmm. actually know what are the true differences that mm -hmm. come from God. So God have a wonderful makeup for a man, and I love that. I love a, a manly man, and Johnny is a manly man. Yes. But some paradigms mm -hmm. can take it too far. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we have to learn those and, and, and change those paradigms that has been instilled through experiences rather than what God has created and formed us to be. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I, I, um, I recognize the differences mm -hmm. and I love the differences mm -hmm. because I love a manly man gonna take care of his, <laughs> yes. you know. Right. And whereas a woman, you might think, well, I can do the same. Some things we can pretty much do mm -hmm. the same, but why would we? Yes. We have a man who delight in doing it for us. Yes, yes. What about those of us that are forever changing? You know, what I like today, I may not like it tomorrow, mm -hmm. which in your case, Pastor Will, would probably keep you all over the place trying to keep up with the different contrasts that I could 
present to you on any given day. So yes, we may have the basic foundation of being one, but today I may like flowers. Tomorrow it's like, I hate flowers. I want a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one of the challenges <laughs> in the relationship, yeah. but we see that you're worth the pursuit <laughs> because seasons change. Yeah. Absolutely. Today I'm healthy and I'm walking and tomorrow you may have to be pushing me in a wheelchair. Mm. So our seasons, our circumstances are constantly changing. So I, we have to stay on top of those even little details mm. of flowers and balloons. Wow, that's good. That's I a good just point. As, as she says, you know, yesterday I liked the flowers and today I like the balloons. Yes. I think it's key that we continue to communicate. Yes. Right? Mm, exactly. That's yes. That we continue to talk now because yes. we are ever evolving. I'm not mm -hmm. the same woman he married 31 years ago. Yes. So when he married me, oh, well, she don't like this and she th she's good with that. Now, 31 years have gone by, things yes. have changed. Yes. I yes. see yes. things differently. Yes. I yes. experience things differently. And yeah. if we're not communicating on a daily basis, yes. mm -hmm. then one of us is going to get left behind. Yes, very so. good, Vanessa. And the other thing, too, is that the become one, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. becoming one is a lifetime pursuit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, where I was out there in <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and she was down there calm as water. Yes. Hopefully by the end, I pulled her up a little bit and she's pulled me down and we're walking that same path. Yes. yes. Now, I think though, the, um, the, the truth in the pudding, the proof in the pudding would be if we could get there quicker mm -hmm. and then we can walk there together longer yeah. instead mm -hmm. of 50 years from now. Mm -hmm. You yes. know, when we're, we're finally laid in our bed holding each other's hand and the Lord is seeing the Lord about to come and say, you know, Mm -hmm. I finally got it. Yes. I love you, but I can't lift my finger right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to yeah. I, I want to be able to walk with her. I want to be able to come down and bring her up while we can do it. Yes. You know, while we can enjoy it. Mm, that's good. So. That's good. Let me touch on a couple of more things here in becoming one. Um, there's a story in 1 Samuel chapter 20 about Jonathan and David. And of course, uh, the scripture says they loved one another as their own soul. So they were soul mates. They were, bond, they were bound together in this relationship. But you can see some things here that are symbolic mm -hmm. of covenant, of two becoming one. Uh, the first thing that they did was they exchanged their tunics or their cloaks. This was representative of their possessions. That's one of the things that we say. All that I have now belongs to you, and all that you have now belongs to me. Mm -hmm. Then they exchanged their swords. That represented their power to protect and preserve one another. We make that, we make that same vow when we uh, share our vows. And then, of course, their belts and their bow represented their strength. And then the final thing that happened, which was the most important, was they cut their hands and they mingled blood. And that represented the fact that they were making this covenant and the only thing that would, that would cause this covenant to be broken was death. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're saying when we enter into covenant. Now I looked at uh, our verse over here in Genesis chapter 2, and, and there are some things that we do symbolic that also represents the same ideas uh, that you Give Deacon Mason a ring? Yes. Did he give you a ring? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that ring represents, number one, an exchange, but it also represents permanence. Yes. Because it's unbroken. It's an unending circle. Uh, secondly, did you change your name? Yes. Okay. 
What was your name before? Uh, Reynolds. Okay, Miss Reynolds, and now you are Miss Mason. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you were Miss Green. And now you are Green, Miss Green. And you Green. Excuse me. Green. <laughs> Say it loud. Was a Williams Miss now Miss Green. <laughs> and it it, it kind of co-joins, you know, Abraham. You know, his name was Abram. His name was changed to Abraham. Sarah, her name was changed to Sarah. Yes. And so God's name was commingled with their name to indicate that they had become one in covenant. And of course, the other thing, most marriage ceremonies have a meal shared where the two families, that's all representative of covenant. And so God considers covenant is very important. As a matter of fact, are we, how are we on time? We're about out. We're out of time, okay. I'm gonna read my final verse and then if anyone has any final comments, I'll let you share. In Malachi 2.14, the context here is marriage and they were discussing divorce. And here's what God said to them. He said, you cannot end this relationship because you are married to your wife by covenant. And so God detests anything that comes between a covenant that's made between two partners and God and is, is born witness to by a company or a host mm -hmm. that are there to see what the commitment that we're making. Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone comments? I think that's the, the main thing. If you're protecting the agreement is between the, the, the two spouses. Yes. You know, it's normally when we're allowing external people to speak into our lives, uh, whether that be mom or dad or children or whatever, it's yes. a friend, a brother, you know, somebody else is talking, about, talking to you and then you're trying to adjust your relationship with your spouse based upon what they said. Yes. But the agreement is between you two. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, if you bind and loose there, God will get behind it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And just remembering, Pastor, that uh, covenant is instituted by God. So we have to spend time uh, with the Lord in his word to build the foundation and not try to lay on some other foundation. But when a couple comes together, and enter into covenant with God, by God, from God, mm -hmm. you have to go to God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's rich, yes. Mr. Tien. And, and it's his covenant. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. It's his covenant that we entered into. It's not our agreement. Yes. It's yes. his covenant. Yes. You know, we're doing it the way he wants yes. to do it. And when we enter into that, the covering that God gives you is, is astronomical. Yes. You know, you can be in some bad stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you're still up under that umbrella, he'll protect you. He'll mm -hmm. lead you. He'll guide you. He'll get yes. you out of it. And I, I want to end with this. I know marriage is not easy. Mm -hmm. But marriage is good. Absolutely. And it's not all hard. <laughs> you yes. know? They're yes. just the easy. The, 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 the part that is hard is the part where you come together. But once you figure out the coming together part, yes. marriage is great. Amen. Marriage is excellent. But you gotta figure the coming together part. And that 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 um, involves compromise. That's good. That yes. promi that that yes. that's respect. Yes. You know, it also involves some love. Absolutely. And it also um, some empathy. You know, we always leave that empathy thing out of it, you know, but sometimes you got to put yourself in the, in the shoes of your spouse yes. mm -hmm. and to try to understand them. Yes. Marriage is great yes. when you can do those things. Amen. And remember, as we close the words in Ecclesiastes, two are better than one and a threefold cord 
it's not easily severed. Amen. And so Amen. if you're struggling a little bit in your relationship right now, just remember, it's not just you and your spouse, but God is right there with you. He's in the midst of that relationship. His Holy Spirit can bring healing yes. in any marital situation if you would just place it in his hands. We love you. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll connect with you again on next week.